Oh, maybe, kinda. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start talking where you can actually see me. So let's do this. Hi guys. All right, so I will get started here in just about two or three minutes. Before I get started, I just wanted to say thank you. My name is Lisa. If you are watching this, you have no idea who I am. I don't know how you don't know who I am by now, but my name is Lisa Kehoe, one of the yoga teachers here at Vivify. It's, uh, this is like the emptiest this room has ever been. <laughs> it's kind of strange. Um, but I want to thank you guys so much for jumping on and for bearing with us as we start to work out the kinks of how we're going to do this whole online stuff. You know, we're all having to make a lot of adjustments with this interesting time period that we've been faced with. Um, give me a sec to make sure our heater doesn't kick on while we're talking. Even though I kind of wish it would, I'm, this cold yoga is no fun, right? So if you're watching, you're at home, grab a mat, maybe um, a hand towel, a block. If you don't have a block, you can use a couple books, things like that. If you feel like you need it, a strap. Um, it can also be a belt, uh, a tube sock, <laughs> something to give you something to hang on to. But before I get started as well, I do want to thank everybody that's been donating to our GoFundMe. We're trying to build up so for the loss of revenue to help out the teachers. I also have put on here my Venmo, and I don't even know if you can see that, so I'm going to kind of peek around for a second. So this is another way, and this is my Venmo, but everything that I do goes directly to Vivify and the teachers, so I'll show that again at the end. Just giving it a couple more minutes, let you all get all settled, tell the kids to be quiet. <laughs> How's everybody doing with all the kids at home? It's kind of crazy, right? I don't know, it's like endless summer. So this is gonna be kind of a moderate flow. We'll start nice and slow and simple, get you guys a nice little deep stretch, especially if you're just used to being in the hot room, we don't have that luxury, not everyone right now, so I want to get you guys nice and warmed up so nobody gets hurt. Still signing on? Okay, guys. Let's begin. And after this um, video, if you guys have any questions, shoot us an email um, or a message on our Facebook even. It's usually myself that answers. It could be someone else, but we all work together. Make sure you're taking care. So let's start at the back of the mat, guys. We're just going to Take a minute to close down the eyes. Stand nice and tall in your mountain pose. Not locking the joints, avoid locking those knees. We do want our legs to be nice and strong, so if I were to come around and give you a nudge, or if I were to trip and fall, I wouldn't fall over. Strong legs here. There's two points of pressure in the front of your feet, on each foot, and two in the back. So think of your feet kind of like a little suction. Good. Just quiet your mind. Lift your shoulders up to the ears. Inhaling as you draw them up. Exhale, draw them down. And just close your eyes. You guys have noticed this. There's no music in my video. If you want to take a moment to turn on some music to play along, go for it. I just didn't want this video to get muted. So put some music on, relax, let's have a good time, and let's start. I want everyone to just bring that awareness to your breath. Pay attention to what it feels like as you inhale through the nose. Feel your belly get nice and round and full. Exhale, pull the navel into the spine. And with control, right? We're not just letting the breath rush out. We're controlling that rate of inhalation and exhalation. Breathing in, breathing out. I want you guys to start to think about something you want to dedicate this, this time to. And we're all going through quite a bit. There really isn't anybody on the globe right now that isn't affected by the events. But I want to remind you as well that while we cannot control what happens around us, outside of us, or even to us sometimes, we don't have control over that. We do have control over what's happening here, what's happening on the inside. There can be chaos on the outside. We still have to find that calm on the inside. So we're going to do that in this practice. We're going to find that calm and also build some strength along the way. Detox the body and just feel good, right? This is your time. Make it all about you. What is it you feel like you could use a little more of right now? Maybe, maybe it's just to relax, right? Maybe it's you haven't been to the gym in a few weeks since the closure and just you're really pent up and you want to work those muscles out. Maybe you're just 
really stressed out, you want to drop that anxiety. Maybe welcome in love, maybe forgiveness, maybe patience. I, I don't know. I'm not you. But pick something right now, please. I encourage you to stay away from goals. Goals are great, um, but they don't keep you present sometimes. They kind of launch you in that forward thinking. So let's just think about what we need right now. Once you've got that intention that you want to set for the class, I'm going to repeat it to yourself with your eyes closed with every inhale, breathing in that intention, every exhale, just kind of letting everything else sort of melt away. Breathing into the nose, breathing out the nose. Maybe getting in that nice, ujjayi breath, breathing into the nose, belly fills up. And exhale, hot and heavy in the back of the throat, like you're trying to fog up that bathroom mirror, that as you do that, pulling the navel in, but still the lips. So instead, you're going to make it a nice, beautiful ocean sound. Breathing in. Exhale. Keep breathing. Writing down those thoughts. Open the eyes, inhale, start to rise the palms up. Squeeze those thighs, protect your low back. Exhale, slight back, bend, lifting through the chest and the heart. Up the mouth, inhale, rise up. Exhale, begin to swan dive, flat back, pull it down with control, moving the weight to the heels. Halfway lift, flat back, come up, inhale. Exhale, fold. Heels come together, inhale, lift those hips up nice and high. Exhale, chin to chest, round and round to a tight little yogi ball. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, drop the heels. With control, guys, let's start to inhale, rolling up like a ragdoll vertebra by vertebra. Inhaling to the top. Shoulders come up. Chins are last to rise, reach it up, guys, get nice and long. Exhale, slight back bend. <sighs> Inhale, rise up. Exhale, fold. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale to fold. High up on the toes, lift those hips up. Inhale. Exhale, crunch that yogi. You guys all yelled the special word. He just made me smile on the inside. <laughs> Inhale, hips up. Exhale, heels come down. Roll it up, ragdoll it up. Inhale, slowly moving through the vertebra all the way up to the top. Reach up, pinkies turn in slightly. Exhale, slide back bend. <sighs> Inhale, rise. Exhale, bow or swan dive down. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Let's just hang out here in this nice forward fold or Uttanasana for a little bit. Maybe pedaling out the legs. Maybe grabbing those opposite elbows and just kind of dangling. Nod the head, yes. Shake it down. But just hang out. Notice that I have a little micro bend. You see it in my knees. I'm not locking my joints. If you lock your joints, you put yourself in danger of passing out. Don't want you to pass out. And just fold. Start to feel that in the back of those hamstrings, just kind of hanging out. Start to walk the palms forward, meeting in downward facing dog. Spread his fingers nice and wide. Eye gaze towards the shins. Navel pulls into the spine as you exhale. If your heels don't touch the floor yet, guys, don't worry about it. That takes a while to get there. We're going to lift up high the toes. Inhale. Pull the hips forward into plank. Exhale, lift your hips up, bend your elbows out, and press your heart towards the mat. Might get a little pop in the spine. Downward dog. Inhale, lift the right leg up. Coming into a nice three-legged. Exhale, step.
set the fruit. Lunge. Good, let's take a knee. Low lunge, untuck your back toes. Take a second to make sure the feet are lined up with the hips, but not lined up with each other. It causes knee injuries, you don't want to hurt, you want to heal. Feet lined with the hips, inhale, lift up. Exhale, calf those arms, 90 degree bend, strong arms here. Inhale, press it up. Exhale, pull. Inhale, press. Exhale, pull and hold it. I can't see you. Not that I could if you were in my class anyway, because you wouldn't be in front of me. But smile, guys. You don't need a reason, just do it. Release those happy hormones. Nice, big, cheesy grin. You guys know me. It's good stuff, right? Inhale, press it up. Exhale, let's straighten that right leg. Half split, pulling that right hip back. Still just in that nice warm up phase. If your shins are real tight right now, you can keep the foot pointed on the right side or you can start to pull those right toes towards the face, getting in more of a hamstring stretch. You can kind of do a little both. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Come forward, inhale. Keep those fingers on the mat and exhale, pull that hip back. Inhale, let's come forward. Exhale, come back. Inhale, come forward. Tuck those back left toes. Step it back, downward dog. Pedaling out the legs. Inhale, left leg rises up, three leg. Exhale, step through. Take a knee, low lunge, untuck those back toes, check out the feet, line with the hips, same rules apply, right? Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, cactus. Inhale, press it up. Exhale, pull it down. Inhale it up. Exhale, pull it, hold that for just a moment, lifting up to that heart, feel that nice hip stretch as well. Inhale, palms high. Exhale, straighten that left leg, half split, pulling that left hip back. Hips are still nice and square. Remember to point or flex the toes on the left foot, depending on what your needs are. Different for everybody, and it changes every day, right? P.S. This is so weird talking to myself. I know that I'm not technically talking to myself, but yeah. You guys knew the mindless babble was about to come out, right? I couldn't hold it forever. <laughs> I have like nobody in here to pick on, no bad jokes to tell. It's weird. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Flat those fingertips, roll forward, inhale. Exhale, come back. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, come back. Come forward, tuck those back toes. Let's step it back, down dog. Drop down on the mat. Knees are going to be mat's distance apart. Toes to touch, hips to the heels, and reach those palms forward. Coming into your peaceful warrior, or maybe in your lineage that you practice. This is also a child's pose variation. Whatever you want to call it is fine. Just breathe. If your shoulder blades are super duper tight, rather than have your palms flat to the floor, you can come high on those fingertips instead and really press those hips down towards the heels and just breathe. Avoid holding the head up, just let it hang. Maybe moving that forehead across the mat side to side, little massage. If you have blocks at home or books, you put a block under each forearm. You can kind of hang on to it if you want. Just helps get a little bit deeper into the shoulders. Keeping the head nice and low. Let's take another big inhale. 
I'm gonna exhale, hand over hand, walking the palms over to the right. You should end up, and you've gone as far as you can, with your left palm on top of the right palm. As you exhale, drawing that left hip down towards the mat. You start to feel a nice stretch all along the left side of your torso, left side of your body. Press that floor, pull those hips down, breathe. Every exhale, we go a little bit deeper and we reset on the inhale. I don't know about you guys, but I really miss class. My body's getting so tight. Ugh. <laughs> I miss my hot yoga. Inhale, let's walk our palms to the center of the mat. Exhale, walk them over to my left. Ending with the right palm on top of the left. Press that floor down with the palms. Draw that right hip down, looking for that nice side body stretch along the right side of the torso. Breathe. Don't forget to breathe. It's so easy to forget and hold your breath. Walk the palms back to center. Good. Let's come up this time. Tabletop. I have to adjust. Sorry. <laughs> Lady problems. All right, bringing the palms just below the shoulders, knees straight down from the hips. It's important to keep a little micro bend in your elbows too, and I don't want to, you know, those crazy elbows like I do, wobble around, I'm going to keep the opening of the elbows facing forward, a little micro bend, do a little cat-cow, we're going up the spine, we're going to inhale, lift the tailbone, chop the belly, shoulders roll up to the ears and back, eye gaze comes up, nice deep back bend. Take a moment and really pull the mat with your palms towards your knees. It's not only going to help relieve some stress and pain in the low back, but it also helps in stretching out the abdomen. If you've been doing a lot of core work, this is a great way to relieve that pressure. For the ladies, there's a certain time of the month we don't exactly celebrate. This helps as well with relieving cramps, bloating, and tension in the lower abdomen as well. Good, now let's take a big exhale and draw the navel towards the spine. Rounding and curling, tucking the pelvis under, chin to the chest, really push the floor away. If you choke or cough right here, it's okay. It's actually a good sign. Inhale, belly down, tailbone lifts, eye gaze up. Cow pose. Exhale, round and curl the cat. If you have low back pain, sciatica, or slipped discs, stop right here. You don't have to go into that full curl. In fact, wait till the back is healthy enough to do those kinds of bends. Back bends are fine, not curling. So if you're good to go, let's round and curl. Inhale, cat pose. We're gonna keep this going, cow pose. <laughs> Exhale, cat, round and curl. Feel that ripple movement through the spine. Inhale, cat. Close the eyes. We're gonna keep flowing with the breath. Exhale, round and curl. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat. Warming up all those bits and pieces. Two more, just like this. No rush. Whenever you finish your two, we're just gonna meet in the middle. Nice neutral spine. My neutral spine, my belly's not hanging, I'm not slouching, right? It's a strong but neutral. It means it's not flexing one direction or the other. And walk the fingertips forward and drop your chest down, tailbone still up, puppy pose. Slide the palms back just enough, drop down to the mat. Thumbs are about your nipple line. Peel it up. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. Baby cobra. Press it back. Child's pose. My knees are slightly apart, so it's kind of a modified child's pose, and that's fine. Tuck the toes with the hips. Downward dog. Head out the legs. Inhale, right leg lifts. 
Exhale, step it through. Planting the back foot parallel to the short side of the mat. Gonna get ready for warrior two, guys. Go ahead and cartwheel it up, warrior two. Take a moment just to make sure that your form is good. That's really important here. You have the right heel lined up with the back arch of your left foot. The weights on the outside knife edges of the feet. My hips are not turned like in a lunge. Pulling forward, they're squaring off. Right, opening up. My pelvis is slightly tilted. Chest up a little bit, squeeze those blades together, shoulders up to the ears, back and down, sink a little deeper. If you're more flexible than you thought, walk that front foot forward just a little bit. Eventually this front thigh is gonna be parallel with the ground and hold here. Still breathing, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, reach back as far as you can, left palm down, right comes up, opens to the back, reversing that warrior, take two inhales and two exhales. Rise up, warrior two. Car will it down, runner's lunge. Shoulders roll up, back and down. Fingertips kind of dangling. Inhale, come up, crest lunge. If you need to modify and drop to your knee, you're welcome to. Exhale, reach forward. Inhale, rise. Exhale, reach. Inhale, rise. Exhale, reach, hold it. Three, two, one. Hands down, frame the foot. Come back to down dog. Roll forward to plank. Elbows come in to squeeze that rib cage. It's not a push up. Chatter on the flow, come down halfway. Peel it to cobra or a lift up, up dog. Guys lift. Roll over the toes, down dog. Now I can't see you, <laughs> so I don't know if you missed it. And just in case, let's roll forward to plank. Chaturanga. Down dog. Inhale, left leg rises up. Exhale, step it through. Switching sides, drop that back foot. Cartwheel it up. Warrior two. Same as four, two, so I'm squaring off at the hips. Shoulder blades squeeze together. You can actually probably see mine. So as we kind of relax, I want them to squeeze. Hold them together, nice and tight. <laughs> Reach back. Right, come down, left lifts. Open to back. Two inhales, two exhales. Rise up, warrior two. Cartwheel it down, runner's lunge. Inhale, come up, crescent. Exhale, reach. Inhale, rise. Reach. Rise. Reach and hold it. Three, two, one. Hands down, frame the foot. Come back, down dog. Roll forward to plank, chaturanga. Down dog. Pedal it out, drop down to those knees, hips to heels. Child's pose. Take a moment, come back to your intention that you set. Wasn't that long ago. If you're like, no, I don't really remember. <laughs> it's okay to make a new one, maybe you've moved on. Breathe, pushing those hips towards your heels. Every exhale going a little bit deeper. Good, tuck the toes, lift the hips. Downward dog. Pedal the legs out. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, kick it up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, kick it up. Exhale, cross it to the opposite elbow. Kick it up. Right elbow, hold it there or do your push up. Bring it back. Drop it down. 
Roll forward to plank. Chaturanga. Down dog. Inhale, left leg rises up. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Bring it back. To the nose. Back. Opposite elbow. Back. Left elbow, hold or push. Drop it down. Roll forward to plank. Chaturanga. Down dog. Oh, I forgot we did CrossFit yesterday. What was I thinking? <laughs> Pedal of that. Walk the hands and up the feet together, forward fold. And just hang out. Nod the head, yes, shake it, no guys. Nice and heavy. Justin again. <laughs> we find that little sway. We're going to roll up nice and slow to the top. All the way up. Exhale, slight back bend. Inhale, rise. Exhale, back. Inhale, rise. Exhale, come down, hands to prayer. Sit in your chair. Oh, I had to put a cheesy rhyme in. <laughs> Good. Sitting in that nice chair pose, if you're kind of hunched over, shoulders back, sit a little lower, slight pelvis tuck, lift the toes. Yes, that sucks a little bit, I know that. Breathe. Palms forward, shoulders back, sit lower, a little bit lower. Good, high on the right toes, sit a little deeper. Hold it for three, two, one, switch. Left heel up, a little lower. Three, two, one, both, heels up. Woo! <laughs> Gotta catch myself here. A little lower. Behind the toes, hold it for three, two, one, fold. Separate your feet. About max distance, let's draw those heels in, 45 degrees. We're gonna slowly sink those hips down into malasana. If you're kind of up here, it's okay. Maybe do a little wiggle, lubricate those joints. If you're good, start to sink in a little lower. Bring those hands to heart center. Use your elbows to separate the knees, lift up through your heart. How we doing guys? Trick question. I have no idea what your responses are right now. Nor should you be touching your phone. You should be watching and participating. Right? <laughs> I'm going to read the comments later. They're going to be ridiculous. I just knew it. Alright, your fingertips come down on the mat. Keep the feet where they are. Inhale. Lift those hips up. Exhale. Drop them. Fingertips are still down. Inhale. Lift. Drop, lift, hold it up high, heel toe the feet back together, fold. Head on the legs, maybe grab those opposite elbows, same thing, doesn't matter. It feels good. Step jump or float it back. Plank pose. Dropping down those forearms so you guys can take a little break. If your booties are up, guys, this doesn't count. Drop it. Curling the pelvis under just a little bit, pushing the floor away with your forearms and breathe. Holding it here for seven, six, five, four, get up, don't fall yet. <laughs> Three, two, one, knees down, press it back. Woo! Child's pose. Come forward. Stay on the knees. Little baby chaturanga push-ups. Elbows squeeze that ribcage. We're not out here, right? We're this way. 
When I do those little push-ups like that in yoga, I want my body, my arms real tight to my body, not out here. Lots of reason for that, good form, but it also helps prepare your body for other poses that require that stability. So keep those hearts lifted, keep those arms to the body, and come down five times. Beginning, five, four, three, two. The last one, push up to full plank. Push it up, down dog, pedal it out. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, step through. Begin to straighten out the right knee, pivoting, facing left. Wide legged fold. Notice that my back is flat, I'm not rounding, right? If you need to come up and hinge the hips a little bit, that's fine. You want a nice flat back. Put in more weight to the heels, a little micro bend in those knees, lifting up to the tailbone and fold. You're gonna walk those right fingertips over to your right ankle. Start to grab down at the shin gently, pull your forehead towards your shin. Don't forget to breathe, inhaling, exhaling, breathing in through the nose, exhaling, let it go. Every exhale, drawing the forehead closer to the shin. Start to walk the palms in the center of the mat. Let's bring it over to the left side. Grabbing onto that left ankle, draw that forehead in. Walk the hands back to center. Good. Let's start to walk your right fingertips over to the right foot. We're going to keep our right knee and our hip aligned. Drop down, high on those right toes. Reach the palms forward, not letting my right knee swing out to the side. I'm keeping it, that leg tucked tight to the body. If it feels good, you can drop onto that right heel. If it feels okay. <laughs> if so, the left toes might start to lift. You'll probably see it better when I switch sides. Ugh, this hair is like bugging me. <laughs> I should have tied it up. Here we go. Walk the fingertips up. Move the weight over to the left side. Keep the left knee and left hip aligned. Dropping it down. First starting high on those left toes. Reaching forward. It feels good. Dropping to that left heel. Right toes start to lift. Feeling a nice deep stretch from the groin. Breathe. Let's switch sides. Again, over on the right. And maybe your legs are pretty strong and you don't need to use a mat to walk back and forth. Maybe we're up. Inhale, rising up or walking over. Switching on to the opposite side. Inhale, come up. Dropping down on the right, exhale. Inhale, rise up. You're still smiling, right? Exhale, come down. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, come down. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, come down. Inhale, rise up. Fold. Walking those palms over to the right foot, begin to pivot yet again. Dropping down to that knee, low lunge. Untuck the back toes, left palm inside of the right foot. That right leg stays tight to the body. Inhale, right arm up. Good, now start to bend the left knee. Don't grab the foot yet. Exhale, drop it. Bend, drop, bend. Drop, bend and hold it there, or reach back, grabbing through that pinky toe and back foot. Release. Hands down, frame the foot. Tuck those back toes, come up, runner's lunge. Set it back to plank, chaturanga. Down dog. Inhale, left leg. 
Step it through. Take a knee, low lunge. Right palm inside of the left foot. Inhale, left arm up. Reach it up. Left leg, tighten the body. Bend that back knee, lift it. Exhale, drop. Lift. Drop. Lift. Drop. Lift and hold it there or reach back to that back foot. One side is tighter than the other. Clearly, this is my tight side. <laughs> Release, hands down, frame your foot. Tuck the back toes, runner's lunge. Down dog this time. Come forward, hovering those knees just above the mat. Don't let them touch it though. Pulse the hips up. Five, four, three, two, one, down dog. Again, hips. Pull them forward just enough to let your knees hover above the mat for five, four, three, two, one, down dog. Pedaling it up. Dropping down those forearms, dolphin pose, head of the legs. Left foot center of the mat, inhale the right leg up. Eye gaze starts to come up, lift your head. Right foot down, inhale left leg up. And then drop. Come down, child's pose. Keep breathing, inhaling, exhaling. Good, two more inhales, two more exhales. You guys know me, you know I have to use those words instead of the B word. I always mess it up. <laughs> Good, tuck the toes, lift the hips. Downward dog. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step it through. Wiggle that right foot up, top right corner of the mat. We're getting ready for lizard pose. Notice that my right knee is in front, I'm sorry, my right heel is in front of my knee. It needs to be hyperextended. We're not in a lunge. This is a base of our lizard pose. You can take a knee if you want to, untucking those back toes. Lifting up through the heart. You can also go on to that outside knife edge of the foot. Take your time. That hip's going to roll open. If you stand up, you can also drop down to your forearm. Lots of variations here. We're going to stay here for a little bit. Maybe you're getting ready for flight, so this is kind of where you're at. Wherever you are, find a spot. It's a little comfortable, a little bit uncomfortable. Going to your edge, just breathe, allowing that hip to open up. Good, remember not to hold your breath, guys. So breathing in through the nose, exhale, letting it out. If you're down on the ground, I am starting to walk up slowly. Gently bring that front leg in. Come back to more runner's lunge or low lunge. Tuck the back toes, come back down, drop. Roll forward to plank, chaturanga. And if you do multiple little push-ups in between, that's fine. Down, drop. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, bring it through. Wiggle it up to that front left corner. Lizard pose opposite side. If you went to the knee on the other side, do the same. Try to 
of match wherever you went on both sides of the body. Trying to find that balance. So this might be your more difficult side. Maybe it's the more forgiving side. If you open that hip up, going in that knife's edge, try to do that again. You can actually press on that leg a little bit as well. Breathe through it. Just trusting the process. Deep hip openers can get super emotional, so acknowledge that, please. If something comes up that's not real pleasing to you, know that it's normal. Just acknowledge it. It's just stuff that's been under the surface and we're giving it a little tension for a moment and we're letting it go so it stops holding us back. You'd be surprised at all the things that we do to hold ourselves back. And the first part is just acknowledging that. It's not always easy. I just caught myself curling my own shoulder. Ugh, pull them back. <laughs> Maybe drop into those forearms. Whatever feels good here. A little uncomfortable is okay. Just breathe through it. And if you're on the ground, slowly start to come up. Feel a toe that foot in a little bit. Come back to that nice little low lunge. Take your time. If you are reclosing the hip, tuck your back toes. Let's come back. Down dog. Roll forward to plank. Chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. Down dog. Left leg, stand the mat. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Slide it down to that wrist crease. Left leg goes straight behind you. Getting ready for our pigeon series. Starting on the right side. When we're coming into pigeon, the front foot is kind of in the hip crease at first. As you become a little more advanced, please make sure the back foot is nice and straight. It tends to want to curl in. Look back, make sure it's straight. Sink into the hips, lift your heart. As you get more advanced, you can start to heel toe that front leg up. Eventually, this leg becomes parallel short side of the mat. My hips are very tight right now, so there's no way I could do that. Um, on a better day, maybe. <laughs> you can also use your block, placing it underneath that bed leg, under the thigh, just to kind of take that pressure off a little. You don't want to rely on it and lean on it either, but it's there to kind of give you some support. Never be afraid to use blocks, straps, things like that to help you get where you need to go. When you're ready to remove them, you will. Lifting that heart up. If you're ready to come down to the forearms, eye gaze slightly up, start to come down. Either you can lay down or you can stack your fists on top of each other and rest your forehead. Just so you're not trying to hold that neck up. We are going to stay here for a minute. So, let's hang out. I mean, how your day was. I'll read about it later. <laughs> Another hip opener, right? Getting into those emotions. So, so pulling from that sciatic nerve on the other side. If you've got any low back pain, things like that. Not just the hips. It really taps into a lot of stuff. But let's talk about this whole emotional baggage stuff, right? First and foremost, if anything comes up, it's pretty... Displeasing guys, you can get pretty emotional the longer you stay in the pigeon series. Don't freak out. It basically just means that you're human. Congratulations. <laughs> but let go. Acknowledge whatever comes up that's not pleasing to you, anything that's negative. It's just, it's been shoved down so deep for so long below the surface that when we pull it up, the emotions didn't go away. They were just far away. So when they become more near, it's a little hard to handle sometimes. So rather than panic and shove it back down, acknowledge it and then give it permission to go. You're basically letting yourself know, I don't, I don't need this anymore, it's okay to let it go. The reason why we hide things and harbor stuff in our hips is really a survival mechanism. So right now, with the global everything going on, and it may not even have anything to do with that, you might have a lot of stuff stored into your hips. We're tapping into our, our masculine energy on that assertive side right now, on the right side. So you might even get a person that comes to mind, maybe it's yourself. Well, whoever, whatever it is, send them forgiveness. Let go of any of the feelings that are attached that are negative because those things don't actually help you. They hold you back. We're here to heal and to get stronger and to move forward. 
It's real hard to welcome in good stuff if there isn't any room. Let's make some room, so just breathe. And usually right when you wanna pop out of this pose is right about when things are starting to work. <laughs> So you're like, ah, oh, I can't feel my right toes. Yeah, that's good. We're cutting off the blood supply. It's, it's okay if your toes turn blue. It's just not okay if your face turns blue. So we're good. Just keep breathing, letting go. Maybe you're laying down. Just breathe, hang in there. My hips are pretty tight right now, so I will not be laying down. <laughs> Make sure you're not leaning one side or the other. We need our spine to stay nice and long and straight and not swerving off to one side or the other. You catch yourself holding your breath, hold it tighter and then release it. We don't want to hold our breath. Think of holding your breath like holding back. That's not what we're here to do. Can't feel my right toe, so you guys have got to be close, right? Oh wait, that's right, I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, slowly start to come up off the floor. Come out of this nice and gently by putting the weight into your palms, tucking your back toes. We're gonna do a little push up to protect that right hip. So push up and bring that leg back. Oi, 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 pedal it out, let's get some blood flow into that right side. Inhale, left leg up. And left knee right to left elbow, slide it down to that wrist crease. Right leg goes straight behind you. One side is always a little bit more finicky than the other. This might be more of the easier side for you. I don't like to say easier, difficult. Just one more open than the other. So take a second. And I apologize, I didn't mention this, but if you practice mermaid or split, and I didn't mention it on the other side, so I do apologize. You're always welcome to take it to that level if that's within your practice. But at least start off with this first, making sure those hips are nice and open before you go into some of those more advanced postures. Lifting up to the heart, allow your hips to sink in, maybe bringing the fingertips back a little ways. Hips are nice and square, not turning one way or the other. When you're ready, smile. Start to come down. Getting into our girl side here, our feminine energy. More of the intuition. Same rules apply though. Anything that comes up that's not pleasing, anything negative, acknowledge it. It needs your attention and then politely give permission to get out. Right? Still breathing through the nose, exhaling through the nose, or maybe that Ujjayi breath that you're still needing to keep your heart rate up and keep your energy moving. Just breathe. Maybe stacking those fists and dropping the forehead. Maybe laying down. Wherever you went on the other side, try to match that on this side as well. And breathe. I see where we're at. All right, guys. Oh, oh, it's already been almost an hour. You guys are doing really good. So we are coming up closer to the end. So great job, guys. We've got a lot of um, awesome classes tomorrow as well. I know Samara already um, um, burst that bubble a little bit. <laughs> She'll be on here at five. We're working it out, right? We're figuring it out. But, um, I will post tonight the actual full lineup for tomorrow. Thank you guys again for, for sticking with us and working through the kinks. We will get it down. We're just kind of having to modify what we're not used to and adjust a little bit, right? But we'll make it happen. We did a lot of deep hip openers tonight, guys. So um, like always, drink a lot of water. We want to make sure that you flush all that stuff out. Otherwise, it just soaks right back in and it can make you feel pretty uncomfortable and not feel so good. So just lots and lots of water, hydrate a bunch. Good, let's slowly, slowly start to come up off the floor. On those fingertips, tuck the back toes. We got push-up, guys. You wanna protect that hip. Bring it back, down dog, pedal it out. Dropping onto those knees, onto your right side. 
Swing the feet around. We're just going to lay back. Just lay back in Javasana. No, it's not your final Shavasana. <laughs> just be comfortable for a moment. Good. So we to bring the knees up. Spine them sideways. Up to the chest. Squeeze them in. Rocking side to side is going to help you get a nice little massage in the low back. Move around a big circle of the back feels good. Maybe making little circles, maybe big circles. Alternating what direction you want to go, it doesn't matter. It's fine either way. Good. Knees are going to come into the chest. Nice squeeze. Arms reaching out. Take a big inhale. Exhale, bump your hips to the right. And knees are going to fall over to the left. And you're going to look over your right shoulder. So kind of the opposite way of your legs. What's important is that your shoulder blades are staying flat to the ground. So if you need to untwist a little bit to make it happen, that's fine. This final twist. Inhale, knees back up to center. Realigning at the hips. Exhale, bump them to the left. And knees fall to the right. Go bit left shoulder. Hello. <laughs> Spinal twist. Notice that my shoulder blades are totally on the ground. If they're not, untwist a little bit. It's important in yoga to think of form first. Dump the ego, right? It's not going to help you improve. It's not going to help you grow. Learn to listen to your body. It's going to tell you what it needs. And sometimes it's not always what we want. Embrace your practice wherever you are. At in your practice is where you're supposed to be. And that's not going to be the same as yesterday. It's not going to be the same as tomorrow. Just focus on being in the moment and you'll be just fine. staring at my bottom arc of that, so we're going to do it this way. <laughs> so knees to chest, squeeze it in. Good. We're going to drop our left leg down. Keep the right knee lifted. And at this time, if you need a strap or a towel, a dish towel works. It's okay to you. We just want to make sure that our arms are doing all of the work. And our body's relaxed. We want the pressure to be on the shin. Stay away from the knee. We're going to draw that right knee up towards the armpit. On the exhale, I want you to squeeze down. I'm looking for a pinch in my right hip crease, getting some pressure on the ascending colon as we enter into our wind removing series. So the human body holds up to 20 pounds of waist in our midsection at any given time. Kind of gross. But what we're doing is helping our body on this part, this portion we're working on now, is helping you to absorb nutrients, vitamins, things that you actually need, um, you know, compliments that you don't want to accept. But what we're doing is absorbing the good stuff, and then we're going to switch and let go of the yucky stuff, that up to 20 pounds, up to, not all the way, of weights that we don't need. Uh, besides the fact that it grosses me out, it's just not good for you to hold all that stuff in your midsection. It can lead to illness, toxins, diseases, all, all kinds of stuff. So we're just doing a little self-maintenance here. Remember the body's relaxed, the arms are working hard. Every exhale you're really squeezing. Good, bring the left knee up. Switch that grip, let your right leg fall. Same as before, think about the shin, stay away from the knee. Draw that left knee up towards the armpit. Find that sweet spot, find that pinch in the left hip crease. Exhale, squeeze down, nice and tight. If you're trying to hug your leg right through your body, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You go right to left for a reason, better out than in, all right? I can't come around and give you guys a squishy. Oh, I'm so bummed. Um, the next time when I see you in this classroom, I'll give you a squishy. I think he's right. Don't hold your breath. Still breathing. Yeah, let's 
bring both knees to chest. Wrap those arms around. If you're kind of needy like me, you can't do that. You've got that strap or that towel. Don't cross your ankles. Keep them apart. Push your big toes together, though, to help your legs stay close in proximity. And squeeze down. Give yourself a nice big hug. Descending colon. We did ascending. We did transcending. Now we're working on our descending colon. Let's let go of that stuff that doesn't serve us anymore. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. When you're practicing yoga, remember guys, do a wind removing series at the end, not the beginning. You don't have to take my advice, but you might regret it. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Squeeze. And release. Coming into you. Shavasana. Corpse pose. No, we're not done. Yes, you have to lay down. So those that are pretty used to my classes, we're just coming down to the last few minutes here. Uh, especially with everything going on right now, I think it's important for us to always remember to let go of the things that don't serve us. It's so easy to, to harbor and hang on to things that just aren't good for us, right? So you guys relax right now. Right? Think about something that doesn't really serve you. Think of, um, and, I, and I mean the negative thoughts, right? The stress, the self-doubt, the self-limiting thoughts, all, all that stuff, guys. This is the not pretty stuff. You want to go ahead and pull it up, right? Find one that sucks, that you don't like. And I'm going to ask you to inhale. I'll let you know where to begin. And you're gonna point, flex your feet, just to get some pressure building in the feet. We're gonna guide the pressure all the way up our legs. The top half will stay relaxed until we move the pressure that way. You can let sips of air out, but don't release the pressure until I say release. And when I say exhale, you're gonna go, and let it go. Now I usually walk around for this portion, so I will try to talk through this the best of my ability for demonstration purposes, but in all reality, you should be laying down and just listening to my voice anyway. So, um, or maybe watching, right? Preview for later, it's fine. So find out thing that sucks, guys. And be honest with yourself, all right? This is about taking care of you. It's also, if you have people in your life that you're responsible for, parents that you're taking care of, your elderly, maybe it's your children, um, you gotta take care of yourself. They deserve those little ones that love you. They deserve the best version of you, not this worn out, washed up version, right? You deserve the best version of you. It's really hard to bring in good stuff if you actually don't have any room for it. So what we're doing is we're just letting go of the things that are taking up space that really aren't good for us. So when we want to welcome in the good stuff, it's going to stick. So find that thing that sucks. Send it a message if you don't need it. Let's get rid of it. Next inhale, point flex your feet or flight. You need to spread the toes. So that pressure building up while focusing on that thing in your mind, repeating it to yourself, that thing that doesn't allow you to be your best. Guide the pressure up your shins, fill it through the knees, start to feel your thighs engage, squeeze the kegels, fill the core engage, ball the fists up your white knuckles, guys, squeeze, 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 crinkle the, crinkle the face up, squeeze the chest, squeeze those glutes, squeeze every muscle in your body, focusing on that thing for three, tighter, two, one, open the mouth, release. <sighs> Let all that tension go. That was your warm up. Take a second, shake everything out. Open and close the jaw in case you clench your teeth a lot. Release the tension in the face. It also releases wrinkles, just saying. Next inhale, let's go guys, let's begin. Point, flex, or flank to the feet, feel the pressure. Feel it rising up through the arches of your feet, tops of your feet. Start to feel it moving up through your ankles. Feel it in your shins and your calves. Start to move it up your knees. Your thighs are starting to get tight, guys. You're going to hold this one a little bit longer than we did last time. So really squeeze those legs. My legs are rock hard right now. Move that pressure up through the lower abs. Engage the core. Feel it in your obliques, moving up the sides. Squeeze those glutes. Really get tight. Now start to feel that pressure coming up towards your chest. Toes to chest are real tight. 
wrinkle the face, guys. Squeeze those arms. Like these fists should be like you're gonna throw a punch, guys. You might get uncomfortable. I hope you do get uncomfortable. Squeeze more, even tighter. Come on, guys. This is a fight for your worth. You're worth a lot more, so fight for it. Squeeze some more, guys. Get uncomfortable. Squeeze. Hold it. Hold it for three. Squeeze. Two. One. Open the mouth. Exhale. Feel that pressure releasing. Moving out your fingertips. Moving out your toes, your nose, your mouth. Just relax. And welcome to your final resting pose. Shavasana. This is the most important pose. And the one most often skipped. If you're one of those who just hops up and goes, guys, you're missing all the benefits. This is where we download all the progress, all the hard work that we put in. This is where we solidify it and make it a part of ourselves. So just absorb, relax, avoid fidgeting or even toweling off or getting water. It can wait at this point. Just be still. Just breathe. Smile to yourself because you took time out for you today. And I want to remind you to take time out for yourself every day. It doesn't have to be practicing yoga. It can be just being alone in your thoughts, turning off your cell phone, turning off the news. <laughs> just unplug for a little bit. Check in with you. See how you're doing. If that means you need to set that alarm clock on your cell phone to schedule that one hour, then set it and commit to it. You need time for yourself every single day. There's 24 hours in the day. I say this a lot, and this pose it hasn't changed. There's no reason why we cannot put one hour on reserve for ourselves. You, you've got to do it. It's your, it's your self maintenance. It's not selfish. No one's going to do it but you. It's your job. Take care of yourself. Learn to love yourself. Let go of the things that don't allow you to be your best and embrace the things that are good for you. Breathe. We're gonna stay here for at least five more deep inhalations, absorbing all the good stuff. And five more equally important exhalations and letting everything else just go. Make it all melt away. I want to thank you for meeting me on your mat tonight out there in the world. Most importantly, just thank you for acknowledging your worth by acknowledging that you need time for yourself, accepting it, and then fulfilling that need by just taking time out. It's really not a little thing, it's a big thing. And I, I really want to thank you for that. It's a lot easier to do. It's easy to overlook. Thank you very much for taking that time out. It has been a pleasure to be here guiding you through your practice this evening. The light in me sees, honors, and celebrates the light that is in you from my heart to yours. Namaste. Stay tuned. See you again probably tonight, tomorrow.